All right, so welcome everybody to today's session. This is the second in a three-part series on planning for CRM success. I'm Jason Gumpert from MSDynamicsWorld.com. We're joined once again by Rick McCutcheon. Rick presented the first event in this series last week, and I'll post a link to that in the chat in case you haven't seen it yet. Uh, today's event should be really great. Uh, as a follow-up uh, to that introductory event, Rick's going to dive into some practical steps on running a CRM project. Uh, as we get started, I also just want to add that we do invite you to add your feedback and ask questions today. You can use the Q&A block that you should see to the right of the slides to, uh, to enter your questions anytime. Rick will uh, be leaving some time at the end to take those. So without further delay, I will turn things over to Rick McCushion. Uh, thank you, Jason. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yep, you sound good. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on uh, where you're located. Um, so if you haven't seen last week's session, absolutely go to the recording and see it, because it kind of puts a framework around what we're doing. Um, I'm a dynamic CRM MVP, but the session I'm going to be doing, uh, or this whole series, is really not based on Microsoft's product, but based on CRM methodologies even though I strongly believe Microsoft's got a great product, don't get me wrong there. So a little bit of my background, I'm a dynamic CRM MVP and also a CSP, Certified Sales Professional. So in my practice, what I work on is mostly um, Salesforce automation projects. So the examples I'll be giving you today are Salesforce automation project examples, but you can actually you know, port those over to whatever you're doing, um, you know, whether it's customer service, marketing automation, and in the Salesforce automation world, you know, we really play closely with both of those. So I will be referring to those um, different um, subsections of CRM as we go through. So today we're kind of going through the step-by-step -step process of uh, laying out a Salesforce automation project. And here's the step-by-step uh, -step process that we started talking about in last week's section, uh, session. Really, step one, set your objectives. Step two, Put your CRM team together. Step three, budgeting, business review. Four, five is process mapping, requirements, design, build, test, pilot, technical training, admin training, user training, user adoption, admin support, and next steps. Now, this may sound really complicated, but it's not. Um, laying it out like this kind of gives us a step-by-step -step process, but also allows us to say, okay, where, we're at, where are we at in that process? What do we need to do next? And you know um, who needs to help me with that? So what type of, type of team that we do we need to put together for that? So we talked a little bit about this last week about assembling your sponsor team. So and this this applies whether you're a small business with five users or you're an enterprise with a couple thousand users. You really need a sponsorship team because of the vision of CRM that you have to sort of have going forward. So you want to be able to make sure everybody understands what CRM can do for them. And last week we talked a little bit about all the executive teams and, and who on those teams are affected by CRM and, and what is the benefit to CRM for those teams and for those leaders. So you really want to paint that CRM vision. You want to make sure that your CRM investment and budgets are laid out. So um, you know, there's initial cost to purchasing CRM, implementing CRM, but as I keep saying, CRM is going to be forever. You're going to use it for, you know, years to come, so it needs to really be budgeted into your business to be able to say, okay, what are we doing this year in CRM? Who's going to maintain it? What are the ROIs? Also, a big component of CRM will be change management. So make sure that the sponsorship team is put in place to help you with that change management. Um, again, Salesforce automation is my lifeblood, and we always have these user adoption problems or issues that come up. People don't want to put their data in the system. So, you know, we're going to talk a lot about that next week when we get into user adoption, but it, it really has to be sort of from management down that this is a serious product, has huge ROI, we need to use it, and we need to put the data in. Resource allocation, right? Do we have enough people, enough outside resources? enough training resources to help us get the job done. So your sponsorship team is really going to help you drive that. So who needs to be on my sponsorship team? C-level executives, sales, marketing, customer service, and of course, information systems people. Even if you use CRM online, um, you're definitely going to have to get uh, information systems people involved because 
uh, you're going to want to integrate it with your Dynamics uh, or your Microsoft Outlook along with probably your mobile phones or some kind of tablet. So, uh, of course, um, you know, with online, one of the beauties is that, that you can install it quicker. You don't have to put up the servers, but there's little pieces around it that will require your IT help. So, um, who do we need on the team? Well, I probably have the CRM project manager on the line right now. So who is really going to be um, the quarterback of all this? Who's going to own the business plan, the budgets, that type of thing? So you need somebody on the back end really to run things, uh, to organize things, to plan things. You're going to need a business analyst architect. And sometimes that project manager is, is that analyst architect as well because you're going to want to look at how people do things before CRM or in other systems and port that sort of business process and information over to it. Um, you know, this morning I'm, I'm working with a, a company right now that's going through an upgrade from an older system to dynamic CRM, and we're going through and analyzing all the current data usage um, in the old CRM system, plus in this case there's a lot of spreadsheets that have been created throughout the organization. What information is being collected on those spreadsheets how do we bring it all over? So there's a big role to play in somebody who can just analyze the business and what's going on. Information system people for hardware, software programming and customizations. We'll talk a little bit about cost programming and customizations in a further slide. And again, the data. The better the data we have to put in the system when we start, the greater user adoption we're going to have. Also, you know, the better reporting we're going to have. And really to get buy-in from senior management a lot of times, they'll live and die on your sort of uh, reporting systems, on the sort of desktop that you can give them. Um, any information they can garner and gather from the, uh, from the system is going to be very important. We're probably, you know, if you're five users, you may not need a pilot user group. But if you're 50, 100, 2,000 users, you're really going to have to find a pilot group to help you through the design, someone who's going to sit sit down and show you what they do, how they do it, spend some time on you know um, testing the system, looking at the requirements we come up with for customizations, and doing a lot of interactions with the CRM team from the user base. Training department, and again, the CRM project manager may be the trainer, but you really need somebody who understands CRM to train on the CRM. So. Again, through this whole change management thing, we're going to deal with it next week, user adoption, how to set up that training program. If you haven't done CRM before, I strongly advise to work with a CRM consultant slash partner who's done it before. And I know I may be a little biased because I'm a CRM consultant, but I get called in you know, after projects are deployed. And you know, it's what I'll call a down system. It's up there. That, you know, there may be some data in it, it may be configured, but nobody's using it. And nine times out of ten, you know, it wasn't configured properly or they just try to use it out of the box. It really didn't fit the business need. And it's a lot more work for me to what I call unscrew a system and start again than to try to, um, you know, put the nuts, nuts and bolts together um, the first time around. And then CRM administrator. And again, on a small project, the CRM project manager could play that role as well. Who's going to maintain the CRM system once it's up and running? Who is going to support that user community? On larger projects, we're seeing this is a, you know, a full-time resource going forward. But again, in saying that, the ROI on CRM, back to our nucleus um, report, was $5.60 for every dollar we spend. So there's huge gains here. So you know, getting that kind of manpower behind it um, is very, very important. So let's talk about budgeting. And you know, budgeting is sort of a sensitive topic. Um, how do we get budget? How much? And whatever. So if you're working with a, a Microsoft partner, they should be able to give you a fairly good idea of what a deployment would have cost you. Um, from uh, implementation, from moving your data over, from doing your customizations, from doing your training. If you have the resources to do it internally, your cost may be less. So um, you know you can figure out your cost pretty much pretty accurately going in and in what you want to do on the project when you're working with um, somebody who's done this before. But I really look at this as you know we're looking at CRM as a business philosophy that we're going to bring to your company create a system of integration of people, process, and CRM technology 
really to do a better job of managing relationships and managing your business. The ROI can be a small ROI or in many cases, especially with the Salesforce automation projects I work on, and I talked about that in, in um, uh, session one of this three-part series, the ROI can be incredibly high. So figure out what you want to change, what your ROI going to be, and then go for your budget. That way you have something to say, you know what, we don't do a very good job on lead management. We don't do a very good job on you know, upselling, cross-selling accounts. We, we can't really tell what our account retention is. So go there with some ROI in hand when you're looking for budget, and you're going to find the ROI nine times out of ten really outpaces whatever we're asking for for budget. And then my mantra is CRM is forever. Uh, this is not something we're going to deploy and walk away from. This is something we're going to deploy, keep working on, keep building out, and we're going to embrace it as a cultural product that's probably going to change the way your business does business, for the good, that is. So let's kind of move on and talk about doing this business review. So you know, when I'm involved with a Salesforce automation project, there's a lot of pieces, a lot of moving pieces going on. And I usually start out with some kind of review where I start to look at you know, these four components, um, leads and prospecting. I start to look at quality, quantity, source, cost, and close rates. What are the teams doing today? So I don't try to always um, you know, produce the future and say, OK, this is what we want you to do. CRM can do this for you. I always go and I, and I look at what's going on with an organization. How are they doing this type of thing today? Because they're, they must be doing it if they're in business. Uh, I find a lot of companies have many CRM systems, and these CRM systems could be in, they're usually classified as spreadsheets that people have created with this information on it that they're currently using to manage their process. So again, we start to look at these uh, areas. We start to look at customer. Where is your customer information kept? Because we want to really focus on the retention, the upselling, referrals and relationships that you have with your accounts. So as we go in and we start to look at your customers, how are you managing that information? And you know, many times we go back, uh, when I ask for a customer list, we go to the accounting system and have a look at the customer list. Well, that'll usually give me the company, but not really the people we're doing business with. Those names, again, usually are sitting on somebody's spreadsheets or in somebody's outlook that we have to pull into the system. Activities. From a sales management perspective, what kind of activities are we looking for in the field today? Do they monitor calls, meetings, and tasks? How is it reported on? Do, um, do we track this type of thing? And if they're important to your organization, they should be important to work going forward. As well, competitors. How do we manage the competitors we're up against, not only on new opportunities, but within our existing accounts? Who are they? Where are they? Why are they there? And how can we beat them? So when I'm starting to look at Salesforce automation, I start to look at all these things. So how do I look at all these things? Well, I go back and I create this study group. And it's part of my pilot. And you know, I'll use an example of a project I'm on now. I've got about 14 people in my study group, four managers, uh, I'll say nine salespeople, and one at current sales administrator. That I go out and send a set of questionnaires to. So the questionnaires are filled in. It usually takes about um, you know, a week to get them back, and then I do interviews. Um, from that interview, I uh, start to determine how they manage their prospects, their customers, their partners, their channel, whoever they're involved with, and then we start to review the process they're doing now and the way they use technology. So we start to really, you know, start to focus in on how are they running their business today. And if it's a multi-million dollar business, I guarantee they're doing all this. Uh, we just need to understand it more. And from there, we can do such as a CRM scorecard. Um, and a scorecard is really an evaluation of how they do it. So in the interview, I separate questionnaires for sales teams, sales management, sales admin, marketing support, and channel managers. I have about a 30 to 60 minute interview. And then, um, or sorry, it takes them 30 to 60 minutes to complete this, then I have a one hour interview to discuss productivity, the walkthroughs, and observe current technology. Now, for those people who um, are enjoying this webinar, if you uh, send me your email, I will certainly, or I'll arrange with uh, Jason, we can have a sample sales management questionnaire for you.
put up uh, with the slides so you can download it and have a look at some of the questions that I ask about sales management. Here's that report card. And you know, sometimes we use a, a report card, other times we don't. It really talks about an area, comments on the area, and then we rate it red, yellow, or green. So uh, some organizations really like this. Some are a little, you know, well, we don't want to start rating people red and yellow. They kind of take it personally. But I've used this type of thing in the past to evaluate areas that we need help and we, and we need to focus on. So really, I think the questionnaires and getting that information back is the most important thing. From that, I go into this. I start to map out processes. Uh, and I think this is my favorite part of the project because it's almost like CSI, right? Uh, crime scene investigation. What's going on? What are you doing today? Let's map this out. And I don't map out how they're doing it today because if I got 10 sales reps, four managers, and an administrator on a pilot group, I'm going to have 14 different process maps. I say, okay, I understand what you do, how you do it. Let's map out where we want to go. Let's map out that repeatable process. And I do it all in Microsoft Visio, great little tool. And there's some other online tools you can use as well. Um, and I'm not that concerned about what tool you use. We just want to make sure that you map the process. So, you know, you can visually map a process and, and kind of move it up against your customer's buying process to understand are we hitting them in all the right spots. It creates a baseline and accurate measurable, accurate measurable field activity and performance, a standard to measure against for improvement. I've had many sales managers take that or VP of sales, take the maps I'd make uh, in Visio, print them out really big and put them up on the wall and said, okay, this is the repeatable process we're going to use. It also kind of gives you an idea of managing roles and responsibilities and territory management. If we're actually going to build out a territory management plan, does that mean we have to realign the territories and do that type of thing? Um, you under, and again, you better understand through process mapping, business alignment and change management, the project and ROI on budget. You can really tell where you're getting stuck in the sales process, not recording things, or things are falling through the cracks once you build out your process maps. And again, the process maps will start to tell you about software, software optimization, uh, customization, and possibly what kind of user experience. So when I'm doing a process, sometimes I start with the customer buying process. More often than not, I, I go to somebody and I'll say, tell me the process your customer uses to buy something. Or I'll ask them, when does the sale process start? And really, most salespeople will tell me when the lead comes in the door. Well, we know through our research that that's not true. Um, according to Challenger Sales, which is a study of, the, of sales processes, it says that you know typical customers somewhere around 57% through their buying process before they reach out to a supplier or a vendor or some matter. So really, the buying process starts before. So when I'm looking at CRM, I'm thinking, OK, what's my customer doing? And how do we have to optimize against that? So let's go through this process from a buying perspective. So what happens in the buying process? Well, some kind of internal thing happens at a company that triggers that they have to buy something. In our example here, I'll use a CRM system. So we're thinking, well, we, we should go out and buy a CRM system. This requirement could come from a department that says, you know what, I can't handle this lead information, too many customers. we got too many spreadsheets going. We can't report on it. C-level executives may say, you know what, I can only get reports right now about what happened over the last quarter. I need to know what's coming up the next couple of quarters. We need a CRM. IT could come forward and say, you know what, uh, we know our data is not safe. It's floating around on a bunch of spreadsheets. Um, I, um, we're asked to create all these different reports. Um, we need to give you some dashboards in CRM to do this. Or requirement could come from a third party. It could come from a consultant like myself doing an analysis on their sales process. It could come from you know a Microsoft rep coming in and saying, or a partner rep saying, hey, have you seen CRM? I think it can help your business. Whatever, it triggers, triggers an internal discussion in that organization. From that discussion, they go out and they do their research. And they research the web. They look at vendors, partner sites, user communities. They absolutely go to social media. They look at LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and blogs. And then they may go out and look for some different reviews on what we're purchasing. So what I'm saying, no matter what you sell or what your organization does, your customer 
or your constituent or your donor or whatever it is you're kind of working on this process for has a process to work with you um, to acquire what you have. It's really important that you start to understand this. And because this process is changing so much over the last decade with, with the, you know, really the onslaught of social media, um, you have to start to understand it and define it for your business. And then guess what? The ROI on CRM is going to get really big really fast because CRM is going to be the placeholder for all this information. You know, if they go to your website, they download a white paper, they ask for information, they're going to give you a name and you're going to understand that, hey, here's a company out there that's actually in that buying process. So we want to capture that as early as we can. So back to the customer side of things. So from a customer perspective, they're going to go out and do that research, build a short list, put some kind of requirements together with their own resources, their own timeline, and you know what? They're going to have a pretty good idea what this is going to cost them. At that point, they engage with a vendor. That could be, we could have vendors on the call today, right? We have some CRM partners. This is when somebody's going to engage with you to talk about CRM. So if they're looking at dynamic CRM and they're a bigger account, they're probably going to go to Microsoft first and say, hey, we need a partner to work with. You know, a lot of people come to me directly as a consultant to say sort of help us pick a partner or help us do the planning before we get into the project, or they may go out to a partner direct, and then guess what? That sales process starts. So we start to look at this and start to think about this. A lot of stuff's going on that we need to engage with. And we need to build a sales process to engage with the buying process of our prospects, with our customers, with our channel partners. We need to accumulate and capture that data throughout their buying process. It's got to go into our sales process so we can, you know, get to a point where we know what's going on, we know what our process is with people, and we can just do a better job of selling to them. Now our friends at Click Dimensions gave us this slide, and it talks about in that whole process of buying that we're, we're touching that prospect at an, an early time, or it could be a customer that's looking to up buy or cross buy something, um, we need to build in these other components. And with Click Dimensions, we can build an email marketing, web tracking, lead scoring, nurture marketing, SMS messaging, campaign tracking, form capture, surveys, landing page, social discovery, integrations, and training and support. The integrations, you know, we're using WebEx today. It could be go to, go to meeting, go to webinar. It could be um, Microsoft Skype for Business. What are the integrations with tools that allow us to get online and, and do some education for people? Again, this all becomes part of our sales process, but we need CRM. CRM is the backbone of everything you see on this screen here because we need to put the information somewhere where we can give it to somebody to work on, right? So, you know, for example, if they come to the website, they download something, they come to a webinar, they attend that webinar, you know, at that point we may say, okay, it goes to a field salesperson. So we can start to build rules within our sales process up against what they're doing in their buying process. And I tell you, this is where it gets into the CI, CSI type stuff, right? You really start to look at this and saying, how can we build something that really, really works? So another thing I get at this point is, you know, we're, you know, we're a small business. We can't really do this. Well, on the other hand, you're a small business. You can't afford not to do it. But you can use a lot of off-the-shelf products right now that will make it easier for you. And, you know, really like Click Dimensions as a tool for marketing, dynamic CRM online, you know, working with it. Those, those are pretty easy to get up and running. You know, they do take some time and planning as we're going for, but it can be done on that scale. And then if we're up to two, four, five thousand 5,000 users, again, both of those products scale out. So there's that ability to scale things forward and up and down really in the Microsoft ecosystem. So we're pretty lucky to have a product that can do that. So what happens next? So, you know, we've got to build a CRM system that comes up against uh, the buying process. So what I tell people is this. You know, when we start out, we're going to have customers, network, and prospects in our database, right? So we're going to start out with a database of our existing customers. We're going to manage those prospects we're going after. But we also need to enter our CRM database is a network of people that we're working with that may give us referrals. Um, and and on many um, instances, that network of people um, 
are out there, but we don't keep them in CRM. So we don't really keep them up to date and notified of what's going on. From an um, activity against that database, LinkedIn becomes more and more important for salespeople as part of their social integration to link into people. Now, through uh, insights within Dynamic CRM Online, you can go in, find people, add them to your CRM system, and automatically link into them or follow them on Twitter and do a bunch of things. So it's kind of cool that the technology gives you a better ability to manage that. In, in the sales training I do for salespeople, you know, it's really how do I use LinkedIn along with CRM to manage my business. Networking, education, you know, you might get leads from Microsoft if you're a Microsoft partner or whatever your channel could be out there, referrals or website. What I'm saying is here is you've got to create that database, then you've got to have these activities. Those activities really are back again to our click dimension slide, um, our activities within our sort of social selling onboarding process for prospects that, that are working together. So from that, we create leads. So we're going to go out and we're going to make noise in the marketplace. We're going to capture who's listening to us. We're going to do that SEO. We're going to do everything we, we need to do, and leads will come into our system and in our database. So from a process perspective, I want you to kind of figure out what your company will do for that. If you haven't um, done that component before on the marketing side, you know, don't try to go too deep right away. Just kind of figure it out at a high level. And then once you get your CRM built out, you can go back to a, a deeper level and build out the marketing. It's easier to build out your CRM processes first usually, then come back on your marketing. At least that's what I found with my own experience. So from this, we have leads or contacts. We can go and we can do the research, right? So um, within Dynamic CRM, again, we have insights where we can go and look at the company, look at the people, find out who they are. Um, what they do, all that type of stuff. So, you know, we usually build that into the process to do that. Then we build in our pursuit. Now, this is a high-level map we use for training, but your pursuit of a, a prospect or a new piece of business is going to be different for every kind of business. So you may have a different process map, different set of activities, different workflows within um, CRM to trigger things. So keep in mind that, you know, the pursuit of an existing account is different than new business. The pursuit of an enterprise account may be different than an SMB mid-market type account. Or, you know, if you have reseller channel, um, maybe you do so much qualification um, within your process and say, okay, we found this company, they're in this vertical, it'll go to a partner. Or they're a certain size, it'll go to a partner. So depending on what you're pursuing and what you're, you know, depending on the types of accounts you're going after, the status of those accounts, whether they're a prospect, partner, or customer, your pursuits are going to be a little different. So once you start doing this internally, you may have, you know, three, four, ten different pursuits that you can trigger into CRM. Now, what's fantastic about dynamic CRM is, you know, right from the beginning, I can say I'm tracking a lead, and that lead is SMB, that lead is enterprise, that lead is a channel lead, and every time I do that, it'll set up your new pursuit within CRM. Very, very powerful tool. So from a sales perspective, we want to qualify things. And once we qualify things, that's when typically on a, a new piece of business, we create that account and contact and opportunity from a lead. Uh, from an existing, existing account, we may just create a new opportunity or add some new contacts that we're getting into. So in this, this example, I just made it pretty simple that you know we qualify it and we can dispose of it. So what we can do is deactivate the lead, deactivate the contact we were talking to, just because they're not a fit, that data will stay in the system if we need to use it again or to, you know, to relook at it, but we can kind of shut it off in the system. If it's a current project, we're going to create that opportunity. And here's a key thing that, you know, is a big ROI on CRM is really in that future project, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to take that future project and um, go through and define exactly what we can follow up with and how we can keep them warm. So we want to be able to do that, go through future projects, and, and build out a keep warm strategy. Um, if it's an opportunity, we want to be able to go in and um, do an overview presentation, discovery, build a solution, get that verbal agreement, create a proposal, and build a presentation. 
So what we're doing with this is we're creating these different fields, different um, different components of CRM, and we're, we're, we're tracking them. So keep in mind that, again, in opportunity, we're building out the fields. We could be building out different processes for different types of opportunities. And then we'll go through and we'll create you know, a close and what happens on the close. And what happens on the close, not yet, goes to a keep warm strategy. Close, yes, goes into account management. And again, we can build in all kinds of sales strategies. So what we're saying here is you want to go in, you want to build out what's going on in your sales processes, map them out, then go back and design your entities within CRM. Then from an account management perspective, how do we classify accounts? You may have AAA accounts, A accounts, B accounts, and C accounts. So what does that account matrix look like? What do the contact profiles for the people look like? And then what's the review cycle for these accounts? So again, this is all not done in CRM. I do this all in Visio, so I can understand structurally how it all looks and what we do. So in this case, I said our AAA accounts get a 90-day review cycle, and we're going to build a SWOT into the system so we can look at growth relationships and deliveries. So again, look at those accounts. What are the touches against the people in those accounts? So if they're a customer, how do I interact through social media, websites, email campaigns, education, and LinkedIn? So I try to figure out what's the best practices and what we want to do. And then once we decide that, we say, OK, let's build this out in CRM. Let's make this our account management process. Let's make this the way we manage accounts. So when I'm teaching the salespeople, I'm teaching them saying, hey, guys, this is how we want to manage accounts. This is, you know, we're going to streamline things. We're going to touch our customer more. Then when we go into the CRM training, they're seeing a reason for it and not just, um, you know, saying, what are, we, what are we adding data to the system for? They see movement. They see management. They see the team self. Very, very important. So from that, and because this is not really a technical session, uh, from this comes your requirements. So you'll go through and you know, take a spreadsheet out and start to map out all the fields you need, map out the entities, map out the workflows, and then get your um, design, your, your building team to actually build you out a prototype. Right? So you've got to make sure it fits the people, fits your business process, fits your environment. So um, this is where we get into whether we, you know, how do we customize an account? How do we customize a contact? What do we do with it? And, and what are we tracking on it? We get into field management. We get into workflows and many other things. So I'll give you some sort of tips for building it out. Work with experienced CRM professionals. Um, if you put the wrong fields and the wrong entities, it causes lots of problems with data and trying to fix it later. You know, work with certified people. Uh, work with people that can give you a project plan. So don't always work against a project plan and what needs to be done. Understand resource requirements from both sides. From if I'm using a contractor, what do they plan on doing? What do you need my team to do? Quick start programs are really working with CRM out of the box. Typically fail. Um, you know, CRM's got lots of good fields within it that you can add to the entities, um, but you have to kind of figure out how you're going to use it, what you're going to use it for add those right away. Again, look for vertical add-ons. If you're in the construction industry, you can look to IPM Global. Um, if you're in the uh, sports management, you can look at Greenfor. These are companies that have built out um, systems that can fit your business. So uh, you know, they give you a sort of quick start of, of downloading the customization. And again, always build out a pilot and a test system and get people to look at it, to test it, and make sure it works for them uh, before you roll it out. So when I talk about configuration, I mean taking CRM out of the box, adding fields, adding workflow, simple stuff. We get into customization. That's where we may want to build a custom entity for managing a piece of equipment we sell. That takes a little more talent. That's where we get into you know, a, a programmer. Integration, if we wanted to go back to our GP or AX, our NAV system, or any other accounting system on the back end, that's when we're going to have to work with a, uh, a programmer who knows how to do the integrations. So out of the box, it kind of stands alone. If you have a requirement where you want to bring in data or move data back and forth, that's what we call integration. Vertical solutions is what I talked about. Applications that you can go and buy for certain industries. And you can find a lot of those on the Microsoft Pinpoint system. 
or really just by going into Bing and, and doing a search. Um, there's lots of really cool ISV add-ons out there. You know, uh, ADX Studio does it for a portal. There's another company just called MSCRM Add-ons. Do it all, you know, a whole menu of little different add-on items that'll help out with your project. So go out and look at what's out there and what can be and what can be worked on. So remember, um, the key components you're going to be working on, you're going to be customizing leads, you're going to be customizing accounts, contacts, and opportunities. But kind of the hidden pieces are the marketing list, the templates, the products, the workflows, notes, activities, competitor, and user roles. So there's a lot of underlying components in CRM that you've got to kind of figure out too once you're doing your customization. Now, if you're new to CRM, there's lots of good resources. Just going to the Microsoft you know, Dynamics Learning Portals, or and there's different portals for different sort of subjects you want to go to, or even going to YouTube. Like, I want to find out how to build marketing lists with Dynamic CRM 2015. There's probably five to ten good videos up there that people have done to show you how to do this. So again, if you're an administrator, you're learning how to do this, take the courses, go and look at the videos, and that'll arm yourself with good information and kind of understand from my process maps how we're going to customize these out. Here's some data rules. Uh, Rick's rules for data. Clean up data before you put in the CRM system. Start with your accounting data. That usually is your best customer data. Um, then you need to go and see what data people are using for prospecting, for leads, for accounts that you don't have in there, and add that departmental data. Um, users won't use a system if you give it to them blank and expect them to put the data in, especially salespeople. Or if you put bad data in. You know, if you go and say, I'm going to get your email, your Outlook list, and we're going to start with that and dump it in the system. You're just going to end up with a lot of bad data or wrong data, and it really is um, demotivating, I think, to uh, many organizations. Again, I said test and pilot. So once you kind of build it out, test and pilot before you go live. You want to really show people. You get a smaller user base. They give you your feedback, and you fix it. Get a cross-section, like get management in there, users, support people, different levels. Find people that are open to change that are going to give you the feedback, that will give you the time get some feedback on your system that you've built, and then do the changes. There's probably you're going to be 80% there. There's going to be 20% changes. Just fine tune it before you put it out. It's going to make a world of difference. Um, make sure you know people are from the line of business. Create a full CRM experience. So take them through a day in the life. On the sales rep, this is how you're going to use it. You're going to do that in the training as well, but do that with your pilot users so they understand, right? Um, go, go look for feedback and make those adjustments. And again, uh, test the system for usability. Don't just test it online. You got, if you've got uh, tablets out there, if you've got phones out there, you've got different browsers. That's a killer. Make sure that you, know, you try to get everybody on the same browser. You're going to end up supporting many browsers if you're using CRM online. Or you know, Outlook's another thing. You've got to make sure that people haven't downloaded a bunch of add-ons into their Outlook system uh, that it's fairly clean. Those are some of the things that we've, you know, looked at before. I talked about hardware. You know, again, CRM load, user tested, Outlook workflow. If you're integrating with Office, test that. And if you're using data synchronization back and forth, you want to test that as well. From there, you know, it's really you get to this point where you've got your system built and you're getting into this whole component of user training. Uh, another thing that I'm going to give Jason, he can post up, I got a sample project plan we'll give you. So you can go up there and look and say, okay, here's all the components of CRM I need to configure, and I think that'll give you um, quite a bit of help. So I think this is kind of our crossover to um, next week's session where we're going to start talking about getting into user adoption, admin support, and planning for the future. So Jason, why don't we open it up to questions? All right, let's do that. Um, so we've had a few uh, folks already commenting in. Uh, the most uh, popular question we've had so far is uh, whether people can get access to the slides. Rick, um, is there? Do you want to put? Uh, do you want to let people sort of email you to request those, or um, can we just post them on the site? We can, as yeah. A as a follow-up, okay. we can do that when we post the recording. Okay, why don't we do that? We'll put a PDF of the, of the slides, of the questionnaire, and a sample project plan. 
Oh, great. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've also had several people requesting that, that questionnaire. Um, okay. So we'll make sure that you all get an alert when we post the webcast recording with those, um, with those documents as well. And if you uh, have any questions about that, um, you know, you can just email me, jgumpert, at msdynamicsworld.com, or you could probably also uh, ping Rick. Yeah. Uh, we have a question here um, that you had mentioned a partner uh, related to sports management, Rick. Yes. Um, Green4, I believe, is the partner name, but you know what? Email me and uh, I'll send you the link to the website. And I'm Rick M at fullcontactselling.com. All right, another question here. I'm looking for a resource to help advise how to set up groups and permissions for users. Any advice? Um, let me know where you're located, and uh, I, I can give you a local MVP or somebody I know usually in that area that can help you out. All right, great. Let's see here if we have any other questions right now. Um, you know, interesting that you mentioned uh, the idea that trying to start with a, a quick start mentality that, that tries to use CRM out of the box really doesn't work that well. Um, I'd be interested to hear anyone else in the audience who has taken that approach and whether it's, what, what their experience was. Um, Rick, I don't know if you could say anything more about that. Is there sort of a minimum um, amount of configuration that, that users should expect uh, to, well, to, you know, to put the time into? Yeah, you really, in Salesforce automation, do your process mapping first. Say, okay, this is how we manage a lead. This is how we manage a contact opportunity. Um, and really look at what fields of information your team collects and make sure those fields are on the screen. And if they have any data in those existing spreadsheets, put it in. So that's only a small thing, but it's not out of the box. I've seen people just install CRM out of the box and start training people with the sample data still in the system. And I mean, it's just, it's very, very difficult because the product comes just sort of generic, right? It doesn't come templated for your business. Um, and the users tend not, not to be able to relate to it. And it's even not only adding fields. There's a lot of fields you can take off because they don't make any sense for your business. So yes, you want to do some level of customization. And I'm not saying build the Death Star before you roll it out, but do something that is relative to your business so it looks like your CRM system. All right. Well, it looks like we're through the question queue here. And, and next I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? About, sorry. Yeah, next week, we're going to talk about user adoption. That's my big thing, right? We want to build a system that looks like what they sell, right? And then I'm going to take you through all the steps in building that user adoption program to make sure this thing sticks and that they use it because if it doesn't stick, then your company won't get the ROI and they won't continue to invest in CRM. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's the same time next week. We hope to see you all there. Uh, one more question, if you have another um, minute here, Rick. Mm -hmm. uh, any comments on creating a custom app to manage CRM access? Uh, the, Microsoft, um, the Microsoft app has limitations, this person says. Uh, again, um, I'm, I'm part of the MVP community, which are the top development guys. Um, let me know what area you're located in, and I can kind of marry you up with a local MVP who can look at what you're doing and answer those questions. And, uh, you, know, you know, from a webinar like this, it's hard to tell what you're trying to do, but, you know, there's lots of add-on applications, and there's lots of things that people have done before us um, uh, that can work. Uh, next week, again, on user adoption, I'm going to talk about the CRM user group community. CRMUG, which is for Dynamics. Again, if you're a Dynamics administrator, you need to belong to that community because when you know we're not around to answer your questions like we are today on a webinar, there's lots of places to post questions, and you'll get some of the finest minds out there in Dynamics CRM answering them for you. Another question that came in with a basic setup, what amount of time would you consider necessary to get started with three to six months? Uh, work, for example, and are there any differences between an online and an on-prem approach? Well, really the big difference between online and on-prem, you know, functionality, you get inside view built into the online, but they're, they're pretty close to each other. Uh, it's just going to take you longer to set up the, the on-prem model, 
and then you're going to have to be responsible for your own updates to the system where CRM online will be all updated for you so you'll always get the latest version so I think you know that's some of the things that you should look at from a time perspective depends how you know you have a CRM today that's working for you that you're kind of copying over and bringing to this CRM system or is this net new to your organization what's the culture how complex is the sale are you selling something that's really a um, a sort of a, a, a common product that you're reselling all the time at a, you know different price points with an e-commerce website or is it a complex sale that has a channel partner involved in it so you really can't say how long but you know usually the planning session that I do that's with the mapping we can get that done in six to eight weeks and that kind of from that the project plan falls out and and then again your resourcing is it a team of one person trying to do all this or do you have a, a bigger team so there's lots of factors. All right. Well, uh, it looks like that was the last question. I'll make one final call for questions here as we start to wrap up. Uh, we did record today's session. We'll, we'll be making it available on demand as well as the slides and the other materials we talked about today. Thanks so much for all the questions, for uh, for taking the time to be with us today. And uh, Rick, thanks to you, obviously, for for taking the time to present. Thank you, Jason. We'll see everybody next week, and user adoption is the number one um, place you have to look to get your ROI. So I'm hoping everybody can join us next week. All right, excellent. That concludes today's event. See you next week.